and really crickets. I mean, really, gee whiz, folks. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricket Tube Busting, episode BTWRLM404. How optimistic am I? Folks, it's not resisting to say resist or acting out. If you haven't no other thought about how to how to do that, get you behind the woodshed and learn you a thing or two. Yeah, Grim, the crickets are having a rough time on all on all sides. A couple questions: Is the reason that uh, to train is the reason that they're using to train you to wear the mask to cover the side effects of the Bell palsy from the herd shot around the world? You just got. Are gonna get, or not gonna get until they give it to you. How thoughtful your handlers have been. Medical holomador, folks, is what they're putting on famine, but in all aspects of life, as I think I'm fairly accurate to see this, not because I see it, it's because they've been telling us it's coming. Austerity is your future way of life. Your rights are going to be what the head of the governance Borg hive says it is. And you did nothing, nothing to really stop. You shirked the responsibility to even protect yourself. And everybody's going to be protected, think they're protected, as this thing incrementally comes and sneaks upon you, and you're going to think it's over there, and one day it's not. It's going to be right at your door, and then in your front, in your house, and whatever else they want to do to you. So how long will you live in fear and intimidation or dread? When will you decide to a man or a woman to stop tolerating consenting to terrorism? This is what we're up against, folks. If you live in fear or intimidated or dread at the sound of an officialdom, a thoata, that's a terrorism. And I'm trying to go, oh, I've been explaining it. Nobody wants to really pick up on it. Lots of people will claim it's useless and fruit, fruitless, and that's the fear coming on you. It will. It will be useless and fruitless, except when I look at what we do, uh, when I get help, help people to understand more than what they even thought, because most people don't have a clue. It really, I'm just shocked at how incapacitated we are as a society to understand quite a bit of things. That once you start to see more, as I can show people who have a wrong to make right, and we start working through it, there's really literally places to go to start checking the problem. And as I apply it, and I'm not going to get too far over, I've already talked about all this, as I apply this to what we've done through the miner, for the helping the miners, the grantees, particularly, not all miners, but the grantee miners, asserting those things in the black and white, the savings provisions against authorities that come under color, which are crime. Those people that do this, the, the miners that had, had did have done this, have not seen more problems with the government. And so there's a, that's my experience, and that's why I'm conveying to you how this works, and it's not going to be overnight, it's not going to be because we think so, and it's not because it's going to happen, any of this happens, corrects itself because of how we think it is. And if you don't know about how this place is wired, I keep saying it, 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 this thing stops when you stop it, not merely talk about the civil rights, your equal rights to, to the oppression is 42 U.S.C. 1981, which should explain the, if you, that should explain how this place works. I'm talking about the, how it works against people, why they look like, look and see that it looks like you're innocent, you're guilty until proven innocent, and all these other things that we see that are not justice and can't be. As I've said over and over, when a minor, a grantee minor, it gets attacked by the government. That's a breach that will never be healed. There's no justice that can ever come of that. The best you can do is be prepared to limit that exposure. And typically in the administrative end of it, and if you understand how this works, you kill the administrative, the government then doesn't have the ability to go judicial on you. And that's where we that's where I figured out we, we end up focusing our attention in the beginning, the very first letter, if you will, and we move that way. And that's something where we understand the government's coming after us. What came and developed through what we saw this last year and COVID and all these other things, moving the agenda into the international, the, the cancer inside, the international cancer already inside your system, as I've explained this for a decade, over a decade and longer, uh, this was going to now bubble up and make itself known. That we, there's a way to address all that, 
And what you're doing is it's at the point where there's only a few. For you, you stop it. For those around you, maybe not necessarily, but if they hear about it, then maybe they can stop it. And then it kind of starts to work out. So this is really going to be a localized fix. We each fix it. This is not, there's no solution that everyone's looking for. The solution is the one that they're bringing on you. They call that the solution. It's the transformation. So this last week was very interesting. I was looking forward to it. I wanted to see more of this constitution kind of play out. But we saw, and we saw that it has to play out. But then we saw how the cancer subverted it. And then there's this thing that came in to try and show us that it was going to be a resistance, if you will, which I told you it's not. Well, what I said was, was like adulterated about last week. And you saw how that works out. What, what you, again, after the events of the, of the consent to the tyranny through something called the protest in Washington, D.C., the so-called battle, the battle that can be still be waged, said that we might be able to wage, requires a tactical retreat and a digging in at home, as I've been saying. It's local. Your answer, whatever you can salvage, is at home right now. And you were told that. But you were told that as an insult. If you looked at the news and you saw what happened in Washington, or all around this electoral college thing, which I said, let's, let's look at that. And last week I said, invade Congress. Get off the steps and go invade. Well, and I also added a little thing that you were supposed to do. Not go in like you saw, and this is the problem. This is the subtlety. Everybody wants to go in like they think they could do. They get riled up. It's just like the, what was, I don't remember these names. These people, do, these organizations just fall from my mind. I can't remember now which one it was. Like a 3%er group, whatever. I can't remember. They, at any rate, uh, the, 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 one of the so-called leaders came, a sub-leaders came into our mining association meeting and wanted to have all the miners capitulate to how he understood things were. And I explained what the law was, and there was no need to capitulate, and that he didn't need to risk a lot of people, and he didn't have the intelligence he needed as a military militia-type protector. And uh, he realized r real quickly that uh, he was really out of place, even though I agreed he had the right to do what him and all his people had a right to do to protect the miner, because it was protecting the property in the constitutional grant, or the constitutionally supported and protected grant which we can do if we do, if we protect it correctly. And so a lot of ignorance, even though there's people that have, they think they know. And I'm not the one to say here that I know everything. I can, I have an insight though, and it hasn't proved over the decades or so, it has not proven to be invalid at all, actually. Scarily, scarily. So we're going to lo become lo vocal local. Again, hats off to William Roberts. Great loss in that man dying early. And... So he had another way to look at the same thing. He went through the he wanted to go through the politics and he said become vocal local because he knew what the government and the federal government and the internationals and then we I found subsequently the states themselves and the institutions of the states were inside and, and taking you taking us down. And so however the events this last week or so were are characterized by the victor, it evidences they knew the victor Knew, knows the people better than the people know themselves and deftly used it to their advantage yet again. And this is a, the main, I've been suggesting all these problems with us. It's what I don't like about protesting. It's, it's what I don't like about being guided without your own thought and what you're going to do for you. And then you see mob mentality, if you will, uh, rise up and then you see the other side is in position to utilize that. You saw the, it's perfect what they laid out. However you want to characterize it. Some will say it's a false flag or whatever. I don't, I don't get into all that. This is not, okay. Peace, peaceful was not what you saw. And for those that want to go the other way, an altar abolish required way more than flags and a bison clad chief as I put that in the RLM chat in response to a chatter. We're talking a bit about this. I hope you appreciate what you saw there was not peaceful, and it was not an alter or abolish movement. As I explained, we would see the a real one would could have happened in Virginia relative to the same, uh, Second Amendment and sanctuary counties, not the counties. That's what the, that was a setup. It was that the Constitution said you could have done it otherwise when you had 95 percent 
of the people to do so. And the constitutional black and white to empower you. That was the way to go through. That was the way to the pathway. Not what we saw, not as we saw it happen, which seemed to me to be a bunch of people being led into the building in order to uh, to let them do what they would do. And so flags and a bison-clad chief is not how you do an ultra abolish. It's not how you do a protest. It's not what I said needed to be done. To start it all, everyone thinks I say some of this stuff, it's like it's the answer. No, it's the beginning of how you start to step back into this. And for you righteously stubborn folks, that means time is now to get behind the witchhead. Where I keep telling you, you're going to have to take responsibility and you become the responsible party teaching the miscreant the error of their ways. And there's, there is no set answer to this in how we do that. This is also not a drill. And we just saw and we see how this is all working out. The frontal defenses are ineffectual and likely is the right to bear arms. What you saw was in the news. We'll get maybe get to the news. I may get some tabs. I may just dump a bunch of tabs in the blogcaster that you can follow through with what I did this week to try and make sense of what was going on and try to make sense of how we would use the news to explain to us our failure and how we might work back through. You know, I just look over and see a quick, the bison guy was another party co-opting an event. Well, that might have been, but every one of those people had the ability to stop themselves and not let that happen. And whatever you call that, whatever you do, that was not how you go in past the steps and into Congress. That was really not the way you do that. And so, again, the Second Amendment uh, didn't come, wouldn't come on. That wouldn't have happened anyway. It likely wouldn't have helped. It likely wouldn't have helped to show a basis of the of the grievance, if you will. And it's going to take a whole lot more because it's not just your right to bear arm. it's having arms. It's having the, the society start to understand what's going on and not by the terminology that's being used, the words that are being used to turn this thing. So l- last week reminds me again, what happens when people have a little knowledge and act out. Similarly, what I've offered here, that what I offer here is like lo- handing a loaded gun to a kid. People are likely going to hurt themselves. You're not really thinking correctly about how this thing is worked against us and has been for a very, very long time. That's the other thing that's interesting. Where We've all been born into this usurpation, the, what I call the occupation. And there's many. There's not just one. Many levels of it. And I've shown that some of these work together, whether or not they can be identified as being from the same source. This sustainable development nonsense that's on it, that's, that looks like a same source, and all the, it has lots of projects and programs. But there's a couple of others that are completely independent of that. And then outside of that, you also have the, uh, the willing integration of types, and I think for advantage, of each other. And so all this is evidence. You know, again, we'll get to the point you know them when you see them. I mean, this is what, what you see. Now, you have to, when you see this nonsense, you have to, I, I, I say you have to step back. You have to start looking at what's really happening. And I said, go up in the steps. I encourage people, go up in the steps. Go past the steps like Dick Army and all the other people. They stop at the steps. I said, go into Congress and occupy Congress and meet, meet with whatever representative is appropriate for you uh, from your locale. And you stay there. You occupy that space in attempting to lo- lobby and legis- cause the legislature to understand. You, that's one faction of a way to start this process back. Not go in and take over the place. Not break stuff. But at any rate, I mean, this is what this is what people do. This is why I have trouble giving people advice, if you will, counsel behind the woodshed. You go out and act out if you're not quite settled. You think you know. We think we know. I say, I talk like I think I know. Well, I know a couple things, but I don't know ultimately because I don't know who's pulling the strings actually. But I do know if I walk a certain way in a certain step, yeah, I walk that funny walk, hey, things start to clean up a whole lot easier. The path gets a lot, the load's lighter and the path is a lot, a lot cleaner. So, you didn't go up, you didn't see, you, you were thrown out immediately. And what happened this week when people don't listen? You went up the steps all right, but you didn't actually meet with any representatives, and they didn't properly discern 
these the people that were there didn't properly discern the battlefield. And guess what happens? Because that starts to be that way. When you're not understanding the battlefield, the, re, the result is here. Someone died. Now, actually, more people die, but the one that I'm interested in today is the woman. Completely indicative of something, and I'll get to this as we move this through. And then the people were thrown out. They were thrown out, and they couldn't stay there in a place that was the house of the people. Now, I've been advocating for years, thinking ahead to avoid any of this jeopardy. And looking at how what this how this thing is really screwed up, how messed up it is, how do we go through do anything if if we if we want to take responsibility at all to protect ourselves? Because even though it doesn't look like it's knocking on our door, it is on our door. We don't see it. It's it's invisible. That part's invisible to us. We think it's out there on somebody else. And looking a little bit more deeply and seeing the consequence of that the, the condition and our failure to act almost compels me to well. That's why I come behind the woodshed every week. Hoping beyond hope, folks. Hoping beyond hope. Because what's already happened to the miner, miners and the land of the miner, the Congress forbade, forbade the people of the United States of America to use to their benefit as a grant has been washed over and no one noticed. And I'm not talking Constitution now. I'm talking the functions of the government that had no right to do what they did that they did that we can put on the ground, the law of the land. That's the invasion. So from that look and view, I look and say, okay, all this in, intangible, thing, all these intangible things, are, are, are have to be taken count, account of and accounted for, and then looked at to see how they may progress progressively in order to take us more, take us more down. Like they have everybody locked down. This, I can't believe that this this is still going on. But anyway, it is. And so the people were thrown out of their so-called capital. And remember, it's a district, not a state. It's going to become important as we move another story here in the future, if I get there, <laughs> because today's kind of a ad hoc approach. I've synthesized a bunch of ideas and a bunch of tabs that came through, and I got it all there, but I don't know if I want to respond to it. At any rate, so I've, I've, added, I've, I've always advocated thinking ahead to avoid the jeopardy. That didn't happen this week. So let's, let's look at this a bit, because the condition's now being contorted. Let's look at the condition for uh, the, that dose of reality which you can only find behind the woodshed here. I hope. I hope not. I wish it wasn't this way. And I hope you find it as the dose of reality that may help to reorient what might be happening contrary to the dialogue of the victor who, whom has overtaken. And ob, it's out, uh, there's no que I don't see how it's a question now. The Congress is occupied and done. And there's people in the past that told us how this would work. And I'll just do a couple phrases when I get there to expose that. That expose what we can anticipate just as we're going to see. And it's already starting to trigger. So you had a, how, behind which, how do you handle things responsibly so we don't become the casualty? As, as the inspired yet tactically ignorant state murdered woman. The woman. Interesting. Speaking to whom? Of many thoughts on this this interaction I'm going to reference here, one of the first of all this was Luke 11.52 that I've explained to you. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and then that were entering in ye hindered. And I that thought came to my mind when I saw the video of the woman being shot coming in through a broken window and didn't get through but halfway and shot. And the woman falls essentially, eventually to her death. The passage in Luke 11, 52 was pretty revelatory for me long ago when I noticed this is how we're one of the occupiers taking us down. And I had done the reading and the proof and the research and I even wrote about it, explained how it worked out. Now, at least when you look carefully, 26 of your states have been occupied by this foreign corporation and domesticated by questionably lawful reenactments of their of the corporation code that work us to, into policy and not law. And it says, if you really know what you're looking at in these, in these words, very short passages, actually, you can see how they did this. 
these folks hid the key of knowledge. And the folks that support it and continue to support it, the aiders and abettors of this style, and the others that came and occupied the place to block out what we realize is a corruption uh, at the highest level. It is our, it's our, it's our society, the leaders, so-called. You folks that did this, you hid the key of knowledge, and you murdered those daring to enter. Then daring to, daring to enter what, folks? Daring to enter based on what we were told in history. Who are you? You lawyers, bar associations, judges, politicians, police, military men, media, academics. And you under the color of the offices of trust, you hid the key of knowledge. Then you murdered the woman from the steps, daring to enter to stop you. Yeah, I know there's lots of people that claim this is different, but you're listening to whoever claimed this was an attack. Well, they knew it was an attack, but they're the ones that are the miscreants in the offices. They're the ones that have allowed this occupation on it. They're the ones that haven't first protected this to secure instead of going ahead and securing to you, they secured you from however they did it. And we were silent. But those of you that are in the offices of profit, as it says, the offices of profit have allowed this. You murdered the woman at the steps, daring to enter to stop you. The house of the people isn't attacked from inside it, from, by someone attempting, locked from without, to keep the republic, as the lawyer, Benjamin S. Franklin Esquire, threatened, where Congress is corrupted from within. I hope you get where I'm going here. We were told by this lawyer, this Esquire, understand the feudal connection to all this. This was not, in fact, I, I didn't realize, I had to do a study. Was Benjamin Franklin actually considered an Esquire? You'll get a proof. I couldn't find it in the general internet, but I did find it through the congressional document. What's that important? Well, you've got to go back to feudal. What's an Esquire? What does Esquires do? And he made a very special comment that I'm reading into that I hope you can find out. The woman, locked from without, trying to keep the republic, was murdered. As Benjamin Franklin said the woman would have to do and threaten. The story goes, it is said that the question asked by the woman on the steps of Independence Hall, well, doctor, what have you got, a, what have we got, a republic, and we got, I don't know if this is even correct, this is what I quoted off of the articles, but anyway, go, doctor, what have we got, a republic or a, or a monarchy? And old Ben Franklin Esquire rejoined with, a republic, if you can keep it. A republic, if you can keep it. A moment later, folks, a moment in history later, just beyond those steps, the woman is murdered entering a window of the barred door of the House of the People as she tried to stop, she believed, the Republic being stolen from here, her. Folks, just beyond the steps of the woman on Independence Hall being told there's a Republic to keep, that woman's murdered, entering that window of a barred door on the house of the people. Which she believed was the Republic being stolen. Now, I'm not here to discuss someone else's beliefs and systems. I'm trying to put this into context. Given the reality of the battlefield, I want to bring behind, from behind the woodshed this context. I have told us uh, through the broadcast we needed to go in a correct way, peacefully, without jeopardy. This woman felt so passionate about this, she jumped into a window and was murdered. And I say that that way. She was murdered. I don't know what everybody else's opinion. I've seen other people say good for her. But when you look, you get the video and you look at it. It took a while to find the video for me. I was finally able to track it down. You can make your own decision. 
then I want you to apply something. Forget about the building. Just look at the act. And I'm going to bring up later some some blog some uh, links for what the act was that they were doing. But they murdered that woman. One cop from the side steps out, shoots her, and steps back in the shadows. No. Later that night, under the color of constitutional duty to reject an objection to the certification of the state's electoral college, the results, an inquiry of which were focused on state-sanctioned electoral fraud, but because of the cause and condemnation of the state-murdered woman, those in Congress extolling the virtues of democracy were the ones invoking inciting mob rule. For in fact, the democracy, the term salad, word salad, yeah, this is what they've been doing. Democracy, they expressed, the esteem means mob rule, contrary to the republic of the constitutional establishment. You heard, if you anybody watched that, I was interested, I did watch it, but clearly it found, I found what was going on very quickly when they came back and started talking right before Georgia. And they all extolled the virtues of democracy. Those purported representatives and senators openly invoked mob rule. Not the state murdered woman. Whom it worse was breaking, had, it was, she didn't even break, she just tried to enter a house of the people into a, what was actually a hallway, and not like, not the chamber, and then even so, they had people that could have arrested her like they have done everywhere else. But the woman, believing that the house, the Republic was being stolen, entered in, and they hindered her in the most absurd and wrongful way. Now, every military man, if you go through the dictionary for military, every military man knows that the democracy, that democracy, the term, the word, term, democracy means mob rule. Then the generals looking on that night did not act to save the republic. They took an oath to uphold. So I'm reminded yet again, Article 1 of the Libra Code, which is at the bottom of the blog cast, Every blogcaster, you can just get the link and go read it. I should actually change that link over to the Avalon link, which I'll be giving you this time. The Project Avalon website. 18, remember, 1863 General Order Number 100, adopted into international law, so-called, and modified, that there is no need for an occupier to declare martial law, martial control. Or as we, I say here, as we say here behind the woodshed, you knows it when you sees them. Or as Lieber expressed, quote, Article 1, a place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army, whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. And if you look at the video of the murder scene, there was only a couple groups of people that had guns and SWAT and everything else. And except for that one district cop, the SWAT, with the guns on the side of the woman, weren't shooting anybody. They weren't seeing any need of threat. They weren't trying to stop anything. But the military, the cops, the policy enforcers, were all there armed to the teeth. And the people were led with flags and a bison-clad elite chief. It's not much of an invasion in my mind. It seemed more that it was let to happen. And then it seemed more it was let to happen as we see those extolling the virtues of democracy, mob rule, inside the house, later, condemning the one woman stepping in to try and 
fee believing to stop the republic being stolen was the mob. It is very interesting for the controllers to work out for themselves. The presence of the hostile army can't be the people in their own house. Now that they added like hood, acted like hoodlums, okay, not so cool. But we have laws for that, don't we? And this is I want to keep keep a thought about that. What those laws are, and what the penalty, more importantly, what that law for those laws are for people who do and act out. There was a way to go up the steps and do what they were going to do, and they failed. They failed miserably, and I don't know what the reason was on that. I have no. It doesn't matter. It's not. It is not what it could have been. Certainly anymore, and there needs to be a rethunk about all that. And your republic is not kept. It, it's finished. It's been finished. Those of you that have been doing this for a decade or longer, seen the problem. We've known that. And what are you going to do about it? You know, put, shrug your shoulders and put your hands in the sky, I suppose, or don't even do that. And then that's where I was until I got into the mining law and said, wow, there's a real thing here. There's real tangible law of the land. There's really something that we can tangibly stand on if we just will. And the people have to do this. Because these other, what do you call them, criminals, won't. No, no, they'll, they'll extol the virtues of democracy. And no one says, wait a minute, but we have a republic to keep. Where did that go? The Republic is finished because the, those in the Congress assembled declared so. Every one of those people at that night, oh, democracy, democracy, do I got to condemn this as an action? Yeah, it's, it wasn't too cool, but it wasn't condemnable in the way they were doing because they were using that as a cover. No amount of virtue signaling that fateful night by masked banditos occurring under cover of an agreeing to fraud 19, however patriotic sounding their constitutional allegiance, will change this fact that de change, uh, declaring allegiance to a democracy is not declaring the public, the republic that was to be kept by them as well. Don't mis under mis uh, mistake the fact of, I thought I only saw one man in those chambers of Congress assembled, no less, that had no cover on his face. Virtue signaling fraud before the whole country of fraud 19. Showing you those people agree that and, and ag agree to commit fraud and promote it. Second witness to the death of the Republic. And I'm not saying this, this is just the final straw that everyone saw. This has been happened already. So lots of you will get on me that it, you know, you'll make these side comments, and I understand it all. It, it doesn't change the fact that we now get to see more. I told you this COVID was going to be a, a domino effect to see more and more and more, and I, I'm just waiting when finally people finally see it. I don't mean the, the, surface, the surface violation. I mean that it's an integrated attack. And then we really have something to deal with, to consider if we choose to maintain property in our own rights, in our own self-respect, in our own self-discipline, responsibility. So when you saw the extolling the, the virtues of democracy, and it was those supposedly supposed representatives under color of being representatives and senators for the republic, you're watching the failure again. And they use the woman attempting in her belief to stop the theft, not of the election, of the republic. As Benjamin Franklin threatened what she would have to do, when she did that, they hindered her. They murdered her. But old Ben Franklin Esquire further advised, and notice it wasn't going to be the Esquire brethren that were going to do any of this either. In fact, they become one of the occupiers. But he further advised that the consequence of any direct dereliction to the duty by the people, mind you, not that race of lawyers, where do I get that, race of lawyers, 1974 Doubleday Dictionary, if any of you can get me a digital copy, I'd like to find it because I want to get that pulled out. The race 
in the dictionary and race to these people is not about color of your skin. And so you, when people get their head wrapped around that one, they might actually understand what's going on in 42 U.S.C. 1981 as well. And this thing starts to get a little bit clearer, even though it's mucky, muggy, mucky, mud, muddy as it might seem. It starts to clear, start to clarify a bit. But the race of lawyers was not going to help you. Esquire was threatening us, if you will, the woman. And she took understanding, took all this time, a moment later in history, and was hindered by those obstructing. It won't be the race of lawyers that keeps the republic. But he explained that the this dereliction to keep the republic, that the executive will always be increasing here as elsewhere till it ends in monarchy. The house of the people occupied, if not conquered, by those singing the praises of democracy, not the republic. Prepare yourselves, folks, to experience the monarchy. The modernized neo-feudalism. You're watching it happen right before you, folks. You're watching a monarchy come back over this country. It's going to be the aristocracy communalism monarchy. It's going to have many little heads. It'll be by a body, no different than a corporation, governance, but a monarchy nonetheless. You ha you'll have what you gave and nothing more. The woman state murdered just beyond the steps of what was supposed to be a constitutional extended extension of Independence Hall is your notice, folks. Rest in peace, Ashley Babbitt. Her name, Ashley Babbitt. And I don't know about everybody else's attitude. I've seen some pretty vile ones. I don't know of anywhere, but well, except for you guys in Texas, you're kind of nuts in a way. And I understand the castle doctrine. But somebody breaking in your house and doing nothing more doesn't deserve a bullet in the head, especially if you've identified it's a 100-pound woman, 100 pounds soaking wet with her backpack. And it requires just a little bit more, I think. I think reasonable people realize it takes a little bit more. She didn't even get that much. That she was no threat on her own. She was breaking, even even if she broke and entered, is the penalty death? Is it instant death? And you're seeing another truth about what's happened in this country. And then the response to that you saw. So rest in peace, Ashley Babbitt. The woman attempting, to, for her belief, to stop the theft of the Republic has been shot, attempting to stop the theft of the Republic. And then everybody went home. Now, you're in an opposition at, at the point you did that, so there's not much more that can be done. Why I say, you better go back, re tactical retreat, reconsider what you just saw. I don't intend to have you all listen to my broadcast, but if you can pick up and find some of them that I've been talking about and how we're really supposed to be starting to look at that and consider those ways, and then until we start coming together and somehow work out through in a mass amount, which I don't know that it can happen myself. But I'm also encouraged by what we do on a minimal, on our, even our minimal level, uh, man and woman, uh, on a man and woman basis, we can change things. That I'm sure Ashley Babbitt had no clue that the penalty of death would be happening in the moment she jumped into a hole in the wall. Where? What do we do? What do we do now? What do you, how do you want to characterize that, folks? <laughs> where do I go through my links now? I, I jump you all the way up in my links. I could jump up to where the British came to and burnt in 1812. They burnt the Library of Congress. They burnt the Capitol. They burnt everything down. And the in the day, talk about spines. Talk about strong spines. They looked at that complete burning of bound down of the Library of Congress. And there's a whole study behind why that was done. Most people will make it a question, but there was a reason. And the Capitol. All 
burnt to the ground by the British as mere vandalism. And those singing the extolling the praises of democracy inside the Congress, it doesn't happen very often, but it happened. Fisticuffs battling inside that room of dignity that they put as a cover of why we don't we don't come against them. The barest skin of excuse, and we believe it. Maybe I'll get to those links. I'm really kind of off my links. My mind is starting to wonder. I just really, this murder really caps my mind, captured my mind a bit. There's nothing I can do about it. There's no way I can stop it now. The woman's dead. Yes, it could have been, it should have been done a lot different. That shouldn't have happened, sure. But it's indicative of who we are as a society. And I don't agree necessarily either that we, Oh, the beacon of uh, democracy. <laughs> See how that works? The beacon that would allow the institutions to work, the people allowing, was now brought to third world status, which has already been there, so this is just indicative of another truth, by the invasion to Congress. Shouldn't have even been a consideration given the people have the right to alter and abolish. And I think if you do it better, you might be able to pull that off. But we should be seeing that happening literally all the time anymore, and we don't, is really another reverse proof of the ineffectuality of our society. We immediately like, have our mind wants to go to Rambo, if you will, and that's this occupation is different than that. And I don't have many people that quite appreciate that, and so they'll either n not understand or not listen or argue with it or fight with me. And whoever you are on the comment, I just thought about that on YouTube, you want to keep talking about it's going to end in violence? Yeah, that fear is coming on you. That fear is going to come on you. That is the ultimate thing. We've talked about this. I don't know why you continue on it. Either you decide that you, that's what you're going to do and go prepare for the end day when you're going to have to die, or you try to continue to avoid it. We just saw how not to do it. The frontal attack is not how you do that. Nobody brought their Second Amendment. They were told you can't bring them. Should have told you so, folks something. And so the question becomes, if it is a right to alter and abolish, how do you ever get it done? Is the joke. And so you go, yeah, that's right, and then you put it back down and don't consider. What you've just put down is your future protection. You've put down the future ability, and you've invoked that, given the other side knows you better than yourself, and it's not even you. They're not playing on someone who's not going to respond. They're playing off of the acting out, those that act out today, to bring incrementalism in. Even further, as I told you was happening, as I told you was coming last year, in fact, year before, now it's been a, 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 month, a week before last year started. And so, the monarchy is here. And to all my respect to James Palato on media marker and not monarchy, not his, not his monarchy. This is the monarchy, the global monarchy. However it is, whoever the players are, however it works, it's on you. Why? And we see the evidence of COVID because you didn't force your local officials to even use the thing that looks like it doesn't work, the law. And bringing it back now, getting it from the federal, which we really, I'm not sure how we figured that out. Lincoln told us the story there. It's a district. It's not a state. And I, there was interesting things leading up to it about the about the military, the, um, excuse me, National Guard. In fact, I, will, I want to get to that. I'm going to go through really quickly on the tab to show you what I had to get there so I can get myself back into that point. They, they told you this is a district, but it's being treated like a state already. Another evidence that you don't live in the republic that was established. And getting beyond the, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, how long, you, how long is it going to take you to keep, how you keep repeating that? Well, you haven't stopped it either, so I don't know what the point is. No, it's either ineffectual, inaction, or it's just wait for the wait for the lead to fly. No, but never stopping to organize up in the proper ways to understand what's going on. No, no, don't do it that way. Don't listen to the guy in the behind the woodshed, even to begin the process. No, don't do anything. Just complain and don't do any. Don't don't do do much. And then those of you that start, you realize it's a little different how you how you approach this. Our ideas of what we thought were going on really haven't haven't been going on and then we look from the organic side and we realize we, we were been, we've been told to have a miscon we've been instructed on how our misconception begins to work in other words i tell you this is when i said the habeas how kind of more constitutional in the united states of america do i have to start speaking 
than to say habeas corpus. A thing, a remedy inside the Constitution itself that nobody in this country, well, well, maybe except for myself, and I know a couple more people that I never that don't listen to me because they don't need to hear what I say. They're actually out there now working, working what they can do. And yes, it's been going on for decades. They've just decided to be responsible to it and just whatever it takes. That there's only a few people that know about it that even know how to do it anywhere in this country. And if you, uh, my view on that is that's the that's the litmus test. Litmus test. If you can't do a habeas, even when you're told how by going to the going to the statute already written for you, and it's there for a reason. You fo- I tell you to follow that, not because I'm telling you what to do. I'm saying follow that because those statutory reflections are problems that people had in the past that are fixed when they were put by the legislature in what you need to include. It's why you copy and paste those. And if you can't do that, you can't affect the most basic constitutional remedy That's indicative of our society today and why we see what we're seeing. And people may or may not agree with that. It doesn't matter to me. I see when we start to actually go to the black and white and actually give it purpose and start to not look at it, the law necessarily as an enemy, even though I can show you more recent law, and I mean I'm talking the last 60 years or 50 years, I think, uh, can be shown to be improper, notwithstanding they've never been litigated or and or or have been and found wrongly litigated because of that other occupation. When you look at the stuff prior in the establishment side, what how it was organically supposed to be, there's column savings clauses, just to give you a simple focus. They're there. Those things are sitting there to to reflect, to be, not even mirror, to be that republic that you can keep, that I see nobody able to do. And so we see the ramifications of our ignorance and our acting out in the events. And I'm just really saddened by a woman dying. The woman, it just equated to me, the woman on the steps believed that the Republic was being stolen and she went in to, to stop it and they stopped her. And that's, I've told you that the figurative woman that's being used, that we're told in history, that, that's a symbol as well. And I've, ta- I've talked to you about it in the past. I'm not gonna, I, don't, I can't keep up with all telling you or repeating it to you the importance of all understanding all this. And it just, it, to me, it sets back, okay, I understand, I don't quite understand something. I see we're being told things in more, in a, if you will, spiritual way, more esoteric meaning, which a lot of people then focus down, oh, it's numerology, it's this, it's that, it's whatever things you come up with. Yeah, it can be all that too. But we don't have to get so detailed in, in our in our in thought, we think we're in analyzing something to understand Something's not right, and then go find where it came off the rail, and then consider, can we do anything about it? And if not, what does that mean? And if we won't, what does that mean? At any rate, I don't have the discussion here. I don't have the time. Uh, I don't have the ability. I have no connection to people. I'm, I'm still working out with people that are earnest and taking responsibility how to organize themselves and their thoughts on how we move along and what's been set up against us. It's a big work, and uh, I don't know how much more there's in me to do as far as uh, continuing. But if I see nobody, and when I see things acting out, and it follows through with you, watch the monarchy come on you. What the Esquire told you, they would let happen, because they never entered in. None of the attorneys entered in any of this, you notice. I keep telling you, that's what happened with you. We could see that with COVID. And then the attorneys come in and hinder you. Like I said, Luke 50, 11, 52 was revelatory to me. It didn't you know? Because I walked in naively, thinking justice is out there, and didn't realize as, as Machiavelli explains what's going on as well. You might read the Prince, not the musical guy. Read the Prince, the book. Every military man knows that. I understand as well. And so, we have a lot that we are naive about, and yet we get explain that and it starts to turn around and somehow it's not it's not right things aren't right that are happening to other people that in part I've been able to make a bit of insulation for me that I say well if other people can just mimic that that insulation goes to them that nobody wants to try and do it is a problem again why we saw what happened and why those inside the cancer inside extolled democracy, have been extolling democracy, 
when it was the republic they were to keep, and no one has said anything else. Oh, you'll say that there was supposed to be a republic, but you won't realize the dynamic and that's working in there, and we've got a multiple uh, vulnerabilities in this that we haven't settled down to say, well, if we expect to have our lifestyle maintained, we better we better get it, get right. We better make it right here, quick. Whatever whatever it takes, whatever we can do is going to be required. As we were talking in the chat before, some questions were going on, and they were talk, referencing Trump being trying to get the gnat out with all this uh, going on, which could very well be. There's a whole dynamic going on that could be going on, but it's all just myth and fairy tale at this point. I'd like to see some of it. It'd be pretty interesting, just like I'd like to see the Constitution work through the Electoral College the way it was supposed to work. And it did in one regard. It worked right on the way through, except there's some very serious problems. And nobody responded actually to those. And I'd like to see this stuff work out, as I said. They did use it. We can use it again. But until we get together to see exactly stop making the fairy tales and start moving into what was supposed to be and then start pressing people on those points, like I've explained in COVID, focus on the failed duty. And in fact, the response in that in the Tulis report, you go to Tulis report, tntrafficticket.us, find that complaint. There was, if you, I think, I think uh, David Tulis is posting those uh, those papers that are coming in in orders. Uh, you'll see they responded with the very point. They challenge your right to do anything, and they do that by by changing your character. Well, if you know that, you then can bring up the, the record objection. And this is the dynamic. They came back and said there's really nothing in the law that they have to follow. And nobody has a way to stop them. T totally ridiculous, but again, not so ridiculous, because they're actually asserting that. They actually use your harm. You're trying to stop the re removal of the republic, the in usurpation of the republic, to blame you just like you saw in the events here last week. And Trump, as we were talking in the, in, in the chat room, they want to get rid of Trump the gnat. They couldn't get rid of for four years, as was explained, uh, opinion opined. And my response to that, uh, straining at the gnat, Trump, is to swallow a Kamala. And you're watching this happen. You're watching this change. It's just, in fact, it came up so quick here. I'm going to just start here, back to the tabs. The monarchy, this is a global monarchy now. However, it got here, and however it's being continued, uh, the ruler, and not the measuring stick, but the ruler, is not going to be anybody local either. And they've already got it in the rules that this is going to be the appropriate experts, as we found out again in the Tulis report. And they respond by saying none of that matters. Which it does. You can't believe that. That this breaking news is, and this is not necessarily true so much to the organization, but it is true relative to the acceleration and the enforcement of what you've heard Biden actually preaching and all the little labels we've all talked about, make, make America, America better or whatever, all these uh, One Health, all this stuff that you saw on the, on the curtains hanging behind this guy. And all the people around him, they're promoting what they're promoting, is now going to be, I think, a tsunami. It may almost be unstoppable, and I don't think that there's going to be very many that have a surfboard to surf that tsunami of monarchy that's coming, although it'll have the face of a of democracy, which never one forgets was supposed to be a particular type of republic, which was not kept, which the oath of those who took that in Congress violated on the night of the Electoral College. Lots of, not just symbolism, but proof and truth about the destruction and usurpation of the United States. And without getting too far afield, I will get to this tab. There was a question, and I thought it was a very poignant question relative to that, that the legislatures determined how the process was supposed to go, and neither of the other branches of the states did not. I thought that was a relevant question which, because of the woman being murdered, the state-murdered woman, so-called representatives and senators, used as an excuse not to enforce the Constitution while claiming they were enforcing the constitutional establishment, is the technique of occupiers. It's that doublespeak thing we heard, all these other nuances, Orwell, whatever, 
all this stuff. So the Great Reset officially launch date is January 25th, 29, 20 to 29, where they're back at da Davos, Switzerland. Which makes me wonder about uh, the proton mail, as I just thought about that. Uh, the World Economic Forum just published what can only be uh, called the official flyer of the coming Davos 2021 meeting of uh, World Economic Forum leaders, the masterminds behind it, the Great Reset. It looks like the awareness campaign we started, which in this case is a uh, humans are free, is a little bit arrogant here. We've been, you know, people have been talking about this all the time, but they want to take, everyone's got to, you know, got to get your ego in this, I suppose. That's going to be the first killer. Looks like the air awareness campaign we started a few months ago has forced them to publicly assume their insane agenda, allow uh, for more public scrutiny, when in fact their documents have been available since before 9-11. At any rate, and so this is Davos coming up. They go through the exp the discussion. This is where the, everything comes together, and they've got a whole list of things they're going to be talking about. And if you look very carefully, it is it is everything that I've been telling you, The let's say, in a sense that I keep, keep referring to them, the modernization acts you saw. It's all those subject matters coming on now in earnest with people in office. And it may be, and I, don't, I haven't looked any closer, but it may be the Dem Democratic Party may actually have majorities in all elements of the government right now, which is going to be, as I said, it's going to be the monarchy, the monarchy under color of even the idea of a republic, the establishment. And I just want to point out here, it's coming breaking news. At the same time, we're seeing a lot of uh, purgings going on right after this electoral college. It's, it's, you can't miss the fact of the correlation. I, I, I know it's not necessarily causation, but I'm, they are telling us what's going on, so I don't know what the question is. And as I move through my tabs really quickly, the activist media smears Ashley Babbitt after she was killed by Capitol Police. This is the discussion. The smearing is really that voice of the victor against you, using your actions against you, using your, your slips and your mistakes against you because uh, they just can. And you allowed it. And, and this is a, it's not that you're not going to not make, make mistakes, but you don't want to make a, certainly fatal mistakes and you don't want to make them so that you can't recover. It's actually one of the things I, I do when I'm helping people is to try to anticipate that so that we, if we do, listen, if you do make a mistake and you plan that you will, but you don't make them that they're fatal and more importantly that you can't recover. You have a response for the error. In other words, you've understood that you could make the error and if that happens, you have a, another place to go. You've built yourself the other fortification, if you will. Okay? So this is a little bit more thought to this. I, I, this is a war. I don't know what else to say. That We know them when we see them. Uh, Libra Code says that. So this activist is being smeared, right? And, that's, and we expect that. But it's the woman on the steps that was speaking to Franklin that attempted to go in that was hindered and obstructed from stopping the steal, not of the election, of the very lifestyle and establishment that already agrees, that establishment already agrees to this Davos stuff. It's what Trump partly did, and he didn't follow through, so that I knew right away that it was a scam as well. Whatever anybody wants to say, it was a, a half half a step, half a work. It was like equity principles we're dealing with in equity, in chancery. You don't do justice, it's not done in halves. And so you see that stuff done in halves, and you realize it's not justice. It, needs, it, can't have, it doesn't have reason or actual authority behind it. And so this is real simple to get at once you understand some of the basic things and stop getting off into what we think about it. We just watch what they do and we watch whether or not there's principles, long-standing principles that are how they're, whether they're working correctly or whether or not correctly. And then we can really assess things pretty quickly that way. But so we're, the activist is an activist being smeared. We move on here as we go through that the, the, the cop didn't have a choice. I only bring this up, to this is what's out in the news, that the cop that murdered the woman on the steps trying to stop what she thought was the stealing of the Republic was hang in the darkness, comes out, shoots, and steps back in the darkness, and she never got to the ground. Didn't look to me that she had a weapon. In fact, she was unarmed. And so I don't know what the justification could be, and you can watch if you want to. It's not good, but it's it's troubling in that it means some, it means a whole lot more than the woman dying as well. But you yourself can find uh, the video at Vimeo. I got the link for that. And you see it from another angle, not the rear side angle, of the cop coming out, shooting. She falls back. And then you see cops. And people are making this big question, 
a cop. This shows you how unorganized the so-called uh, protection was. A SWAT a clothed cop with the people on the other side of the door, on the outside, back through the window of which the woman falls, dying, had to tell people, the cops on the inside, that they were there, the cops with the guns and everything, were there, and don't shoot them. And there was a thumbs up. And there's a lot of questions of the freeze frame I've seen of the cop with the thumbs up. All he's telling people is, it's us, don't shoot. It's okay. Doesn't sound like a riotous invasion of any kind. At any rate, you can see it yourself. I, I just include all this in the links. I don't know how many of you go read, look at those, and I don't know how many believe you understand what you're seeing and what there is to know by just listening to me. And I do thank you that you do, but I, this is really, this is, um, I've been becoming more and more troubled each week, and uh, we really have to integrate better. Uh, if we have any any idea how to start sending up, if you will, nodes, and these word nodes are in my mind because I'm trying to search out a serverless social system so that we're not on the internet as you see the purge happening and it's not real easy to find but anyway if those of you that may understand about that I'd appreciate a feedback what I'm looking at right now is something as far as a, a suite of cap capacity something called utopia but it's closed source so I don't trust it at all another thing that may be available is retro share uh, things like that may be how we have to move out now so that we are we can organize up however we want, federated, if you will, dis disconnected, but still have contact with each other, and it's, it's a ghost in the machine. Anyway, getting back to, to this, uh, we see the action, we see the response, we see everyone uh, doing this chaos, if you will. People call out what they thought it was, an active shooter. No, it was just the cops stopping the woman from the steps, trying to stop the steal of the republic. Forget the election. The Republic, she finally figured it out, given the, given the impetus, whether or not Trump was, told her to go do that. I, see, I don't agree with any of that e either. I haven't found any evidence he called for the violence. This is the other side. This is the sides taking advantage. And it shows how smart Trump and his folks weren't to be cautious of the language that they use. And they, you saw him even say that language, words are important. Yeah, well, I've been looking at language for a long time and the words coming out of the woman's mouth on the House uh, in, in Congress assembled was a was a fraud as well, when you put it in larger context. But the woman uh, is killed. Eventually, she dies of her wounds. More people died. That's, those are done. There's different things going on. A cop died. Okay, so it wasn't peaceful. And so we got to be cognizant of all that. But then the government comes back, and it says another title, the California woman killed by during Capitol riot was a military veteran and staunch Trump supporter. And so they, again, the, the spin, the point about this story is the government comes out to cloister the cop that did it, and they're going to do their study, as we know, that should have given us no more knowledge that the closed house is not divided, and you are from it. You're not going to get inside, and they will have all their excuses. Not even a new thing. Just pointing out everything is in this story or that are all the wrongs that should, uh, that could be made right, that why there's no one solution. There's certain people that have a certain inkling to make things right in certain ways that get hit by this a certain way, and those are the ones that should jump in on those points. And there's enough of us, I think, that we could cover all the bases on these if we just would, how to more properly approach this. But they will they have not, no answer. They want to say that it was, the cop had no excuse. You look at the video, and if you can watch it, be careful. The graphic, uh, graphic um video there but you watch the you for yourself what what happens you watch for yourself and think what threat was that actually and what's the penalty for someone doing that actually it's really not a special building it is in our psyche it is it has this historic thing it is and should be esteemed and it should be exalted as far as it's the hub of where the people speak and are spoken and protected and secured. But is that the case when the inside has been eaten out by the cancer? 
And when you're not of a mind to even consider that, there's really no use for you in a society that was supposed to keep itself protected from the government. When you saw you had the right to alter and abolish, there should have been a notice there's a future problem coming. Somebody before you realized this wasn't enough. If you can keep it was not a joke. So, this uh, D.C. riots that go through talk about now we knew it was a California woman. This is all coming. We didn't know who the woman was, the woman on the steps. Well, I'll give you a link to Benjamin Franklin, and it goes through his history. And uh, it's important to see this, what he's done in this story from Wiki. They don't say he's an Esquire. I had to keep going because I thought it was. I had a discussion relative to the brethren of the Esquire, the attorneys that came from the feudal system that were supposed to be, that claimed to be helping us. And we see the admonitions that they weren't uh, through Benjamin Franklin. I have a link to that. And the evidence that Benjamin Franklin had an Esquire attachment, he was of this class, this race of attorneys, uh, is the, and this would have been inns of courts back then. You have to look through the history of this. Is in a document that I found, uh, mainmemory.net. It says on it, uh, by authority of the Congress, that Benjamin Franklin Esquire appointed the Postmaster General of all the United Colonies of the continent of North America. So we have him in the Brethren, if you will. And when you, I say this import, importantly because this is the same Brethren that's with us today and the same one stopping uh, that the justices of which were not independent. They're actually promoting the, par, the partnerships through bar, bar Association because it looks like it distances them. This is all a big scam as well. Uh, to embrace and promote the things that the Davos people are bringing on. Totally foreign to you. It's a new invasion. Just as the bar did, it's the same model. They come in foreign to you, but they get in, they get you under quite, uh, arguably lawful means, as I found that they did in 50, 1953, in most every place finalized by December 31st, 1953. And there's a couple reasons for why they did it then relative to taxation and status. Uh, they supplanted the de jure law of the people and imported a de facto law, and it was called your codes and statutes. It went from laws to codes and statutes, the revised statutes. That was on through policy now, not law. And so do you see the overthrow, right, with the word supplant. The courts recognized it was a supplant, supplantation, <laughs> and, uh, and so. You hid the key of knowledge, and then those that entered in, you hindered, is exactly my experience. When you out this thing and understand it, you try to move in, and then you get, this is the crickets on the government side, which is partly good, the silence from them. It's what you get when you ask about, did you as a public health authority do the first few things that the legislature required you to do, one of which was to determine the infectious agent. You get silence. You get, oh, you get noise. You get you get a letter back that doesn't answer. They aren't even good enough to answer your question either, not just to say no. They just go off on some other thing. In fact, a couple of you have sent me emails to show me and, and explain that. They, they didn't even answer. These people, can't, in your leaders can't even answer a simple question in letter form. It's terrifying to me. You know, I don't care what the content is. But uh, it was, ye enter not in yourselves, is, is the condition of the attorneys, the bar members. But in fact, they aren't entered in themselves like you have to be entered in. They entered in, but they did it as a plausible authority. In other words, they're in controlling. And that they hinder you by that obstruction and usurpation. I have the link for anybody who wants to see it. So you see I'm not speaking too far outside of what's available. Luke 1152. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, then that were enter them, and them that were entering in ye hindered. Is everybody's response to the court system. And yet this is, it says lawyers, there was more involved in this passage relative to what it's trying to tell us. Again, I don't get, we just divorce ourselves, if you will, from the, from the, people have a problem with this and they say, oh, it's religion. No, okay, we can say that, or we can push that aside for the moment till we get a little bit better mind and insight and discernment, and we can look and see these are lessons told to us of what's happened to a people prior. 
And I, I can't tell you how much of a revelation it was to walk, finally come to enough knowledge to read that and say, wow, that's exactly how we're treated. And then I said, okay, now what? Not just, oh, we're done. Now what do we do? And somehow I've been able to continue pressing on that question. How do we get these guys? How do we out them? It comes down to we only have maybe embarrassment and the record, and then hopefully lots of people see us. Okay, that doesn't sound so powerful, but I know that a few people that start to do that become powerful. And I I do strategies to get at the fact of the, of I don't use the excuse that they hid the key of knowledge. I go get the knowledge. And then I don't go back and I look in the tactics to avoid the hindrance because we have no excuse if we intend to be free and have a government securing to us, not securing us, but securing to us protections that every other government and man knows has been violative of. The basic breakdown and breakdown of what so-called democracy is into monarchy. And you've lost it again. Moving on here, the Republic, if you can keep it, I was focusing more on what on this thing qualifying that what Benjamin Franklin said. My view, this is years ago I thought about this, I wanted to bring it together for you, uh, relative to what, what were we being told by this guy? And this article talks about, that I'm here looking here at uh, what would uh, the founders think. They explain the difference in the democracy and the in the Republic and how you can see it. They're very difficult. You look at definitions, it's very hard to parse apart, but there are distinctions. And I really, to maybe in my ignorance of not being able to fully, I don't have the mental capacity to quite understand, like I think the founders innately knew, I've reduced the Republic down to this thing I see through the mining law. You see everything about property and protection and the security the government provides, not gives to you as a gift like it owns it. It's actually sitting in trust. I understood trust. I know what trusts are about. In fact, when I saw trust, I looked at the back of the dollar. I said, that's not a, for a motto, as I said in the chat room, in God we trust. No, that's the in God we trust. It's a trust. Only that one is not the one you want to be in. It's like looking at the Pledge of Allegiance, I think, isn't it? The Pledge of Allegiance, it says, God indivisible. They put the comma in 1954. They acted the word indivisible. Well, when you go find and do some research, and I, I wish I could find them again, you'll find God indivisible is an entity. Everyone thinks it's God uh, indivisible, like it's religion, like it's belief, like it's uh, whatever you want to believe. It's, it's some kind of a spiritual thing. No, it's an actual God indivisible is an entity. And it was imparted, given to the to us in 1954 by a particular group of people. It has a meaning why it was put in there. And it speaks to this bigger thing, this bigger global thing. At any rate, so what is a democracy? What is a republic? Got kind of uh, convoluted for me at some point. I understand the basics. I could recite some things. But how it actually became alive, if you will, was actually dealing in the mining law, actually dealing with property, and then looking to see the trusts that are there, looking to see the relationships, how the the grantor, the one that's giving, if you will, the to securing to you a certain part, and it wasn't free, that you have to do work. All this production stuff is work. You're having to put something in before you can get anything out. Then you qualify that grant. Then it's supposed to be secured to you. And it is in the law, but not by the occupier, unless you can chain them down. And so it takes a very specific way of going about doing that. That's why I say don't invent the wheel here. Don't go off in your opinions. And I don't even have to care about the different distinction between democracy and republic. If I know how I get the republic to materialize again is to go a certain path that was saved to us in black and white, not making it up. And so what has the skin and so we had the republic, we keep it. That was ended on my mind and through, you know, we can go different pathways, but in Lincoln's time, in that more perfect union, and keeping the more perfect union, not the republic. And then we move into the Avalon Project, and I have tabs up here, uh, the Libra Code, which you can now read what I read before. I won't read it again. And uh, moving into the consequence of what you see tells you by deed what's going on. And it works also not just in the action, but the omission to act. The silence is telling us torrents of information, <laughs> if, if you will. The, 
you're just watching if you can speak, look and discern the silence of what's ha what you're not seeing that ought to have happened or another thing. It's telling you a whole lot of things. That's the deed. In fact, if you look at, by as I talked to you about, but it, okay, extortion is uh, in the property, unwarranted uh, restraint of the property or to a third party, and coercion is to the right of a property. Those are the felonies. Those are done in commission or by omission is what I'm focusing on there just to give you a simple place to go to see it. This is what we're talking about. You look in the world, you look at what's happening, but you also look at what didn't happen. Maybe even how it didn't happen. Maybe even why it didn't happen. And that's the analysis that starts. So you're already having, it's not just looking at a question and answering it. It's looking at the who, why, what, and where and answering all that to get the intelligence, and then it's to apply what you see and hope that you're integrating it all together. You synthesize it. You don't let someone else synthesize it for you. And so we, uh, women possibly crushed to death. There are five people who died. So this is a tragedy of what happened. And it, when you have a bunch of people, I suppose it can happen. But interestingly, what I, the only reason why I even bring this up, not to expound on all the damage and the, the, the propaganda that's going to be fed to you about how terrible all this was, and it could have been done a whole lot better. I, I, I'm disappointed. However, it, it did what it did. It did what we are. It, it is what we are. There's no excuse for it. And it should be actually happening this way. If we were going to let this happen, we should be doing this more often. What do we do? We get to the ultimate. If you get to the ultimate, they said that this is supposed to happen to a bloody tumult every 20 years if we were going to keep this republic. Another warning. And how many times has that happened since the, 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 the Civil War? No. And so I don't see this happening. It's a repeating regurgitation of problems. I don't see that as an answer. We have to rise up and we have to exalt the condition that we want to live in and then protect that for us. At any rate, so it's a different type of view I have. But here we have a, women crushed to death in the in these group of people. People died, and then they go through the list of who the casualties here. A cop dies in an alter, altercation, doesn't really say how he dies. What I want you to understand here, and because I'm still focused on all the fraudsters in Congress with their masks on, aiding and abetting the fraud 19, none of them spoke out, most of which are attorneys as well in that house, in that chamber, in the Congress assembled. But I'm focused here. You look in this story. Does anybody die of COVID-19 here? Enough said. Okay. Do you, hope you appreciate my humor, folks? Maybe not. Maybe you don't understand it. I'm not much of a comedian, but it just, it, it's an unfunny joke as we see them telling us what's going on that we don't start using some of this. And yet we, I look around a society that's falling victim to the plunder of it all. Now, Florida, three Florida lawmakers missed the historic congressional vote in, on the Electoral College. They come straight out and say those three from Florida weren't weren't able to do much, even if they did vote. But what I found important, again, the underwriting tone, the reason why they couldn't show up was because of the COVID. Again, agreeing to a fraud. These people agree to fraud or they agree to be, uh, what? Not just aiding and abetting, to be gullible to, vulnerable to gullibility about a fraud. Is, is not, to my mind, keeping the republic or having people that can. And so my, also, my other thought on this is if we want to get right down to it, what we're seeing as well with everybody doing the mass was not necessarily the harm at that point when we see suppose people, one of them couldn't take the oath of office right before to be in the office. Three people couldn't vote on the most important uh, political thing that everyone has a big political hang-up about, in the in the in the country's um, um, historical moment, which was the electoral the electoral college certification, the COVID stopped. The myth of COVID interfered with the politics of a nation. Seemed to me to be another avenue to point out whoever's promoting COVID is committing treason. So while you're all after the guy with the horns and the flags and and the and and all the words and how, how the they're they're stealing they're stealing the election. This other thing is sitting here as the motive force for what's coming in Davos that you're totally not addressing at all. 
and it'll continue. All these excuses will continue. We're looking at treason right there. The, uh, excuse me, terrorism. It is a form of treason. We're looking at terrorism. When someone does something, causes a biological or ma material agent to happen that affects the politics of a nation, federal law says that's ter international terrorism. It's also domestic terrorism. And so the evidence in the news that says three Florida people couldn't go do their politics, whatever that is, even in the corrupted one, evidence is terrorism. Does anybody speak to that? Who, event, who is the promoter of this fraud 19? Are the terrorists. Just another way to get at it. I don't know how many people are going to see this. I don't know. And then you could say, oh, yeah, okay, we know that, so what? Move on. And move on to what? Yeah, when they knock on your door and say, here. And I understand now that Grimner doesn't like the jet word jab. <laughs> the jab. The vaccine. Yeah, the jab. I use the jab because it's only three letters and it fits better. It also can put chimp jab together. It makes it sound cool to me. It's nice and compact. It also might get the attention for the people in the UK who are really having some trouble. But anyway, the vaccine. The jab. Coming to a place like an arm near you, I suppose. Maybe an army near you. Some more stories. This, uh, the Capitol Riders to be charged Thursday. So this is where I want to get into the woman on the steps hearing what uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, said a moment later going into the uh, hall to stop the theft of the Republic, to stop it being usurped, uh, being murdered. We hear that now Capitol Rioters are to be charged by the U.S acting U.S. Attorney General, acting U.S. Attorney General, another clue what's going on. And so that shows there was crimes that could be punishable and that there's a penalty. So we could say the, the law is working here. Law enforcement's on the, on the case, on the hunt now for all the rioters, all the people that, that broke it in and all the whatever charges they can uh, now, now put on you uh, would be what I ex would expect for those that didn't quite you know, that caused trouble, that did harm property. It was a disgrace to see all of that. But in a different context, it's only vandalism. Even if they burn the whole place down, right? 1812, the people with spines back in 1812, the, the media back then said, oh, that was just mere vandalism. And we want to see, and that's what I want to point this out. They're charged with the crimes here. So what were they? Now, here's a link. You can see they're charged. You can see then, look a little closer at what they're charged for and ask yourself, does any of them have the penalty of death attached, an instant death attached to the charge of what typically is entering in a building without authorization? Carrying out a lectern. <laughs> I mean, childish type stuff. It's funny, but yeah, that's all. Does any of, I want you to look at this, look at the charges and go to ask, tell me, does any of them constitute the penalty of death and then instant death that the woman on the steps going in what she thought to be a usurpation of the Republic deserved death, instant death, will more define what I'm telling you that I believe it's fully murder, what happened. There's no, no excuse. Even if the cop was felt threatened, as we understand, he might have, but you don't see that happening. You don't see that in the video. And reminding what I said before, the most infamous floor brawl in history of the U.S. House of Representatives, when I was speaking to, when all these people, like Rand Paul, boy, he just really went down the toilet here, claiming how, you know, how noble this place is. No, the place used to be a raucous house at some point. They had dueling in places. In fact, it's still in constitutions. If, if you duel, you, you can't hold the public office. And I looked at that and go, that doesn't mean you can't duel. No, no one does it. And I guess there's other statutory crimes that they'll get on you, like maybe murder. But at any rate, it's in there. So anybody that says that this place was pure and clean and so noble, they didn't look at all the, all the hesitation the Republic, if you can keep it, the altar and abolish as the people see fit. The duking out inside state houses that people claim in other countries the United States doesn't do when you see it in their country. No, we used to do a lot of that when we had a spine, when we were people that had conviction. 
Did we all die around it? Nah, only a couple people did. But that's when we had statesmen standing up for what they believed. Maybe not so good either, but the point is, is that this isn't so demure as the, as the democracy extollers and virtue signalers will tell you. So you have a link to that. And I want to get back over now to what happened right before. Democ they say democracy. The Republic is a messy place, we've been told. And we'd like to believe that we can do better, but okay, we, we slip every once in a while. And so this is part of the scene. This is part of what the Congress creators knew going into the vote that night. This is known and not unknown that vandalism, that the burning of the Congress was only vandalism and brawling was not above happening inside the chambers. That when I it almost, I, can't, I didn't quite get to making me sick, but it made me sick, if you will, to hear what I heard coming out of the mouths of the people in those chambers on something I'm looking to see. How are they going to, what, how, what's going on here with this electoral college certification process? What's going on? That's pretty cool. Yes, my expectant expectation level may have been a little high relative to the, the fraudulent excuse they they did, so I was a little disappointed at that. But Pennsylvania's uh, discussion, which I did watch, was interesting. It wasn't what it needed to be, but it was interesting. But uh, by then I was already understanding this was a, a, they had decided to use this as an excuse to extol the virtues of democracy and not keep the republic. But 300, right before that, 300 misery, misery, National Guard members deployed to Washington. Now, Washington is not Washington State here. They actually should have put D.C. to clarify. Because anyway, it matters here. Why? More than 300 members of the Missouri National Guard are headed heading to the nation's capital. Now, we see in the first sentence. And what they said is the primary mission there was, and this is right before. Now, in other words, there was, there was National Guard there to keep people more constrained and the video I saw was the Capitol Police were allowing people in. And I'll tell you, I saw one video stream that the people, that, uh, the, the, uh, the bison-clad chief walking in with his entourage, lots of people were, were like looking like tourists walking in, casually walking in, looking at the hall they were walking in, down the road, through the ropes, didn't break out, just walking, videoing the whole thing. They are let in by the cops, let in by the police which I would think was, was fair. I thought the cops initially, in fact, I think they did very well. I think they were very constrained, notwithstanding the one cop that did the murder. I thought they were trying to keep things real real simple, real low-key. I appreciated that from them. I expected that. They should have allowed people to walk in. No, to go to the chambers and cause disruption? No, maybe not. That's not, shouldn't have been done. We should have been a lot more adult, you insects than that, but that all, none of that happened. We're now in the day that, that's going on. I wanted to look back and say, what did they set up there? The mission here from the from the National Guard, from misery, now think about this, from a state going into a district, was a critical infrastructure protection in support of local law enforcement, said Brigadier General Devon Compton uh, during, a, during a briefing. The effort is known as mutual aid, and it is common practice across our National Guard. Now, well, I, got, I don't have time to keep going into all this. What is mutual about a district versus a state, unless the district equals the state? Shows you that you don't live in the established republic anymore. And that misery guard had to go over there, and they felt proud to do that when it wasn't a state. And it was mutual aid. What mutual aid is the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., giving the state if it's not in a capacity of control? What aid does the Missouri give to that other than force? And we see a bit of the military here. Actually, some interesting stories explaining what was going on, the illusion happening. D.C. National Guard wear black vests to send message as Trump supporters protest electoral college certification. That was a political protest. Kind of got out of hand, not quite like a riot. But anyway, any rate, they were within their ground. It was a political protest. But they were not wearing their black, black vests. In place of their usual camouflage ones on Wednesday as the crowds have already begun to gather to show their support to President Trump before the sworn. What this was, the black identification vests are meant to highlight a different mission 
for D.C. National Guard, spokesman Captain Tanisha T. McCona told Fox News. It's, it is the traditional uniform worn during domestic support operations, including presidential inaugurations, the 4th of July celebration, the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington last year. It is not body armor or a tactical vest. It's different from the camouflage vest, just like this mission is different from other missions we've done in the past. Explaining that each black identification vest includes guardsman's name, rank, and service, plus the D.C. flag to show our pride for in our city. Well, those are from misery, folks. Uh, what about their flag? And what about this D.C., our city, with Misery National Guard, that the National Guard is part of the district and is part of the D.C. district, not a state? Doesn't sound mutual aidy to me. It sounds like there's a unified command that has the appearance of being distinct that is actually pulled together, which we probably, we, I think we see this in 9-11 underneath House, uh, the uh, Homeland Security. There's no distinction anymore. So this republic, if you keep it, has been lost a long time ago. And we see this in this in this story. To me, I see this in this story, whether or not you would, or you think about it. Or the, to me, it matters because I want to keep track that my interpretations are, are accurate on, and on, how I, on what I bring to try to solve problems. These people put on camouflage. They want to show you that these colors mean something. These are the gang colors now for D.C. It's a different mission. If you don't understand this is telling you the symbology that they use is real then you're missing the trick another trick you're missing another clue on how you observe something anyway so these are it's, it's all here to no no it, there's a lot here to see beyond the, the uh, sensational beyond the failure beyond the things that were trying to be done even beyond what the the victor of the usurpation just uh, now puts on us in these new in these stories dc mayor activates 300 D.C. National Guard ahead of pro-Trump. Well, they're not D.C., see, but that's their claim now. Under mutual aid, they now become the district's guard, not misery guards, National Guard. And so, uh, I don't know what, what anybody sees in this. I think it's important. It's showing us what I've been telling you about the way this place is wired, and if we need to take consequence, uh, see the consequence of that, and it will certainly, in my mind, it certainly affects how we would do what we would do. And on the story of having all this National Guard and all these police and thumbing up a SWAT team member on the side of the bullet, the bullets are flying too, thumbing up the guy on the inside saying, don't shoot me, we're out here, it's okay, don't shoot. After shooting the woman at the steps going in to stop what she believed to be the usurpation, get this, uh, get this twi Twitter come through, brilliant uh, observation. He says, it's a Yusef uh, Munayar, who says, we spend 700 and $50 billion annually on, quote, defense. And the center of American government fell in two hours to the Duck Dynasty and the guy in the Chewbacca bikini with a picture of the posing of the posers in the halls of Congress with their Trump is my president, the chief in the bison-clad chief holding the American flag and a bullhorn and the other guy holding his hands in some spiritual fashion, I don't know who these people are, and one in a mask, the posed posiers for the media picture. He wants to know how how the, the, the $750 billion in defense couldn't stop Dunk, the Duck Dynasty and Chewbacca bikini-wearing guy. Are we going to learn, folks? Pence won't interfere with election certification, despite Trump's pre pressure, officials say. This was a lead up into that as well, uh, that the Trump was putting pressure on Pence. Pence was going to not subvert democracy and overturn the election results. So you see already the cake is baked here. And in fact, if you look, I found it interesting that they made the, the states, actually, I hadn't heard this at the time, but Pence won't interfere with the election. There was no going to be no interference, even if, even if they didn't certify a state. Or even if, more importantly to me, if the states 
as the Constitution says, are to determine. The legislatures of the states are to determine. And a number of legislatures called recalled their vote before this point. That Pence didn't have an actual vote uh, certification to make until the objection of the states was done. The objection of the legislatures was finished. That was ignored in all of this. So for all those extolling like Rand Paul, that he didn't want to interfere with the state, where the states, and he knew this, where the states had asked for recall to the, recheck, they wanted 10 more days to look, and not to interfere with the inauguration. Rand Paul completely blows past the fact that the states were, the, the will of the states was not honored there. And I'm not, again, I'm, I could care less on the outcome. It is what it is now, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're going to get down to the nubbins of what's supposed to go on, then we have to look at that. At any rate, so Pence was being pressured. This was a big old dynamic in the news. Trump couldn't pressure him. Trump was asking him to do certain things. There was a certain rule in 1871 that was brought up that he could, that he might be able to do. It was up to Trump to decide to, uh, excuse me, Pence to do that. Trump comes up and says that Pence doesn't have the backbone. He didn't have the backbone of courage to do anything. Well, what I looked at, I go, well, I'm seeing state legislatures saying they want their stuff recalled to double check something, and Pence will ignore that. Then Rand Paul's idea is all down the tubes. And in fact, in some regard, Pence didn't have the courage to go ahead and do that in the face of what? The woman being murdered by the state under the color of her being a mob. Travesty of what I see, you know, constitutional things going on here. Excuse after excuse. And because of this state murdered woman and her being the, now the, the problem because of the cause she believed in that Benjamin Franklin was warning everybody about. There's people and representatives changed their vote. And I brought some of these up, kind of documenting this point, uh, lo, uh, this whole condition. Loeffler says she supports the senator's challenge to the Electoral College. She says that one day we move on. Then she says after this event, that, and uh, lots of GOP senators reversed their objections. To me was what I told you earlier. It was the excuse that was used as an excuse to abandon keeping the republic in favor of the democracy they were extolling the virtues to. And not allowing the states, is, it was on record before, this was even more powerful when I heard that it was, because I hadn't heard it until after, that the states had tried to recall their vote, their, certi their own certification. That that was not used as a reason to continue, but this fiasco that got created and the state m murdered woman was used in her intention to stop them was used as an encouragement to not have them run the republic through I thought was a very interesting twist and turn a torment of the republic another comment here to Rand Paul it really irritated me it's not like I've been a, a big fan of any of these people I just really hate the hypocrisy standing in all the virtue of a, we got to give the states rights in a hearing that's made to check whether or not they could be certifying, says he could not object because it would interfere with the state's right. At the same time, he's not allowing the states to recall their vote and then votes to continue the electoral certification. Is the height of, to call it hypocrisy? I don't know what this is called more than crime. He's not his father, for sure, and I wasn't too... I mean, lots of people are a fan of Ron Paul. No, Ron Paul did another type of thing. I like the guy. I like these people, somehow, as people. But politically, there's problems. And I look at these in, through an enough different analysis lens than I think most people, so a lot of you won't understand... You'll disagree with me or not understand it, or whatever. It, would just, it doesn't matter to me at some point. It doesn't matter, even so, if we have an agreement and came to terms with that. Ron Paul was up there trying to do the... Uh, exploitation thing as e as easy as everybody else, and then he denied to the states what he claimed he was protecting in not objecting to the certification. Fascinating to me how they do this to us. And no one says anything about that. Oh, no, they give, you know, you get on either side of Ron Paul, Rand, Paul, Rand Paul's condition and uh, don't go look at the point of what the consequence was. And then what happened, coming back to Georgia, the Georgia from after they got the they reconvened Congress assembled to do this whole stuff, then they, the word, first three minutes told me they weren't gonna, they were going to abandon 
the objections generally and that the the certification would go to Biden. So I, I stopped listening until my interest back when I, I happened to get back in at a time I wanted to know, okay, what are these hearings really over? Because they've been truncated by not bringing evidence. And Pennsylvania came up. It happened to be just at the right time Pennsylvania came up, and I watched that whole thing. And guess what? Hardly any evidence except for some assertion, just statements, came up. Did we hear anything that was put out as evidence? No. And get, and a lot of mis, misinterpretation, misstatements were being made, false statements were being made, that the case that has, that Trump has lost, he never lost, he was never actually allowed in the courts, was used as a reason why it should not be by the, there should not be a rejection of the objection. And so th there was a complete grinding up of uh, truth, and that, that hearing you find very quickly was not actually meant that way, that people were attempting to do what they asserted to do, because if they had backed off this Loeffler woman, and she's out of, she's out of office now, I, I think, but she's, she should be taken out after what she did. Anybody who stopped their initial objection that was supposed to keep, keep the, keep the election thing true, those that backed out should be out of office, because they're not even true to their own condition. Those that, like Rand Paul, saying, oh, he wasn't, he was going to object because it would be a violation uh, to, to impose the rejection, would impose a, a servitude on the states not intended by the Constitution, it is a fallacy where those five, five uh, legislatures said we want to recall our vote. We want to relook, continue to look at this a little bit more. At any rate, moving on here, keep moving. And then the call out because of this, this, this is an attack. This was an operation. Uh, Clyburn accuses resigning Trump cabinet members of running away. After this happened, People started fleeing the ship, if you will, from uh, from Trump. Uh, the people who helped them, the aid of Melania, no less. They all left. They started leaving. Some people from the cabinet blamed Trump for what had happened, and they pulled out. Well, Clyburn said, "You moved out so that we can't we can't get rid of him under the Twenty Fifth Amendment." There's only twelve days left, but they want to still get this guy out. Shows you that there's a big dysfunction in this place, and when Trump's gone, it doesn't get fixed. And so we have people coming back. They're so rabid on getting Trump down and out, and permanently so. They're now talking the 25th Amendment, have Pence, who doesn't have the backbone to do the first thing and honor the state's re recalls. I don't think he's going to go the 25th route. So what does Pelosi and the, and the De Democrats do? No, they're going to try and do the impeachment again and try to get it in in time. More wasting time generally. He's out in 12 days. At any rate, so you can read about all this as things I'm just putting forth. They're all in direction about election integrity, but there is none. And I just tell you back in 93 or so, 95, I figured out the machines were compromised, and that ended it, finally ended it for me about voting. Before that, it was that the re registration card is a servitude to D.C., a state, but not a state of the union. As you saw in the military of the mis misery Guard becoming DC guard without a without a comment. And again, move on. I mean, just all these stories are right here to tell us something. And then there's the electoral integrity project. I saw a video. The people heading this, they don't mean electoral integrity. If they had, they would have stopped all this nonsense and they would have eliminated it before this came. These are this project was created specifically to come after Trump. And Trump is a gnat, and we're here. We're swallowing gnats, and we're going to swallow Kamala now. Just like we're told happens. So now we see the consequence, getting back to the murder. What I, again, murder. Man photographed with his feet on speakers, uh, Speaker Pelosi's desk is arrested. Oh, okay, so we have, they're going to be, you do something wrong, you're going to have to answer to it. Police arrest man who carried Pelosi lectern uh, and horned capital intruder. Arrested. Going to be charged. A whole lot of these stories coming out. Dozens charged in capital siege including Florida man. Florida man makes his appearance. I couldn't believe when I saw this. Another another inside joke, I suppose. Carrying Nancy Pelosi's lectern, an Arizona man wearing fur hat and horns. So the chief got taken down. All happening with days. What am I getting to here? I'm getting to the fact that notwithstanding they're not back in the D.C. and they weren't arrested then, Law enforcement, so-called, is out there to arrest them and bring them to account for things that were criminal charges, criminal on the books. And they will go through a process. 
and they will have a penalty. However, we I'm not considering the, the corruption of it all, and I'm just saying there's a process. They will go through that, and I want somebody to point out how anything that they were charged with is going to enjoy the death penalty. And then I want you to look at the the, mur, the murder of the woman that came from the steps to stop what she believed was the theft of the republic, and tell me did she do worse? And you're going to be able to should be able to define that she was murdered without due process of law, and that's a symbol to you today of where we are in this country, as I've been explaining for forever, and more specifically how it was rolling down. Anybody who has any eyes to see has been seeing this. It's nothing even new. I'm telling you, it's all wrapped up in this one event. All the wrongs that the people haven't righted that need to be addressed and much better than we saw act out and those who acted out to do so. And the continuing consequence as the monarchy now steps up, it'll have the cover, the false front, the spaghetti western. You don't even see the the military occupation, first of all, but then you, you've been looking at a republic that's supposed to be functioning. All the people of which testified against themselves in the Congress Assembly as to keeping that. You're going to continue to watch this false front republic that isn't even run like that anymore. And they're going to then put on another, to cover another thing coming. And right after all this has happened, like I thought I noticed in the elections, the stores started locking down more COVID, more masks, although I haven't quite seen it yet. No one seems to mess with me. Not that I go in with anything on my, I just walk and do my thing, but at any rate, there's no, no indication to me that it's real anyway, uh, that then we saw locking down, we saw more purgings coming, we see it now happening, more and more companies attack, calling everybody who was acting, they call, you know, acting out and with Trump now, identified as terrorists, and that's coming from, going to be coming through Biden, they're, everyone's going to be now, they're going to actually open up the fact that anybody who speaks is a, is a domestic terrorist if you don't say our stuff correctly and so you're going to have to i'm telling you i've been telling you how to counter that you're going to have to learn that this thing if you well you're just going to have to learn it how to do this and it's not that hard it's just that you have to kind of focus for a little bit figure it out and then you'll have it in you uh, but you're watching now the de deplatforming now happening right after all this all on trump's back all right he did nothing the people each did something. It's like saying a gun kills someone. No, the one handling the gun kills somebody. Then we better get that oriented real quick. And this is how they they disassociate and re-identify the culprit so that they can move the agenda through that we see happening right now just after. the. This was a coordinated attack. Parler's CEO speaks out about uh, after Amazon boots uh, from the AWA system and vows to rebuild from scratch. The parlor group that everyone's moving to now is being kicked off of their servers through Amazon. Well, it was also that, another story as we see moving through, that Google suspends parlor social networking and uh, from their Play Store, and Apple gives a 24-hour warning. So right now, parlor may be being booted off of having a platform that you all went to, and this is the weakness of having centralized uh, backbone service why I've been looking all for two years now, I've been looking for serverless type technology. I can see it's there, but I haven't quite seen the right situation. And I wish I had some people that knew more that I could back some ideas up to see if I'm kind of don't quite get it. Or if I got it, I just need to see it better. Something more easy for everybody to use. It may be serverless. It may be what they call friend to friend, peer to peer, however that works. There's other other types of things that do that, but these centralized social networks are going to be destroyed, and you're going to see others pop up. But as we found, as I found from our article, it destroys your, your your listener base. It destroys the people finding you, and that's part of this other process. You're seeing now the ramification on the back of doing it wrong. What these people that are in control, the media, the social networks, what they were made for, is able to still control it and blame somebody else, and plausibly so. Now, everybody that this happens to understands it's wrong, but you're not, a, you've been out positioned. Clearly, you've been out positioned. So, Parler is attacked. That's where lots of people were going from Twitter. As to that, I, I may have to just, I'm not quite sure yet. Twitter's so unusable to me that I may just be putting up a, a post here that says, just go find my stuff over at uh, reallibertymedia.com here eventually. And we're just going to go through that until we can find a better thing to do. A better, maybe decentralized type of federated. Uh, social network that's just invisible. It, it's invisible to the system, folks. I, it's, it's a kind of a cool idea. 
At any rate, so, as I said, Utopia looks very cool, but it's closed source, so I don't trust that. And then uh, RetroShare looks very cool, but I, I've got questions, and so, again, working this through. But anyway, we are told about this monarchy coming, okay, and the monarchy of control, and the fascism, and the communalism, and the communitarianism is on us now. That's the governor, the communitarianism, if I can find a word, all this wrapped up in one that is going to come to control you by various abrogations of the savings provisions to you and your inability to understand that. And so they'll win the day every, because of you just don't you don't know as much as they know about you and you haven't quite figured out how to respond. And I've been telling you about how to do that. And uh, see a quick note over here from Grimner. The Iron Web is the answer. I need to talk to you about that if it's if it's beyond just the, the idea of the book, but actually putting something in practice. But anyway, so getting to the P2P type stuff, it's it's kind of like the way talks works. And so it's uh, kind of de indestructible in a way as well. So it's but it's si more importantly, it's silent. And if people flood to it and start working it, it works supposedly works better because of the interactions. And anyway, so we're told that, that we were going to be outed. We're going to be taken out of our ability to communicate, I've been saying we're going to have to come together to figure out how we're going to be able to communicate despite that. There's no excuses here. The lack of ex the lack of integration is going to be them dividing us, and the integration from inside the cancer that's already been put in the system is going to be what they now use, as I've been offering to you over and over through laws to show you how they do that. That we have this uh, little pain came up, uh, a quote, I hope we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations, which dare already to challenge our government to a trial by strength and bid defiance to the laws of our country, as quoted by Thomas Jefferson. The moneyed corporations, look at what's happening today, and has, has been happening, and don't explain that the people before us had an insight in the world that is just lost to us in large part. We don't know how to deal with the intangible as well. Why well, I tell you that the, a lead bullet is not going to stop these intangibles. Anyway, that's another it's another discussion, another laying out of the battlefield, discussing it, describing it, and then within that context, finding a wrong we want to make right, and then right doing right to fix it the best we can. And I've been able to see that we can we can do that. We can fix it. If, if the critical, let's get back to the the the, crit, the guard. If the critical infrastructure protection and support of local law enforcement wasn't to protect the Second Amendment and your right to alter or abolish the criminals that you could identify inside, then what is their inform infrastructure that they're they're talking to is not the republic that they were duty bound to to keep. That engages us and allows the witness, the the generals watching the the extolling of the democ the virtues of democracy, mob rule while condemning it. And they stand back after taking an oath to a republic that they were supposed to keep from do enemies, domestic and foreign, is really silenced, a deafening silence, to me at least. Now, we have people like Thomas Jefferson. Remember, Jefferson Mining District was named after this gentleman just in general principle. Certainly not everyone's perfect. But he was a property guy at some point, and so we kind of went with that as a group of minor 200 of us at the time. And so this gentleman comes back up that we have to, shall crush the birth of the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations, which dare already to challenge our government to a trial by strength, bid defiance to the laws of our country. And the way the country responded was to go into debt. And so now what? Now we're going to, how are we going to do it? Remember, all that's there, and I says, I say that. Remember, the, the attack's coming on the economics here. Believe me, it's coming, and I don't know how to tell you to stop it. I don't care. I don't know how to, to get away from it. I don't necessarily believe it's in digital bitcoins, although that might augment it. It certainly can't be in a cent decentralized, centralized system like a blockchain, and yet you're going to have to have a, an alternative to do transfers between yourselves, uh, whatever, and it's going to have to be local. And so we're looking at the way you get rid of the moneyed corporations is they don't have money. You have to have the money, and you have to give up what you're doing with them. And so if I can, I'm going to a few minutes here move from the events we saw this week ex really explain our condition. It explains how we're not going to do it either as well. 
It explains that the woman on the steps has been murdered after being told she was going to have to defend the Republic because she had to keep it as us. And we are the woman without rights at this point and dead until we can figure out how to come back. And we're, again, there's a way to do that. Let me move on to how they're taking us down. All the in, the continuous remember reminder in this whole event thing was this COVID, the masks, the symbol, the face covering that they're getting you to put on your face because of likely most of you are going to have Bell's palsy, if not the first jab, the second jab, the second insult, the injection, the non-immunization inoculation. We now have evidence of, again, and again, these aren't that great a number, but they're just evidence of what could happen to you. The perfectly healthy Miami doctor dies. Now listen, folks, three weeks after getting, I think it's three weeks or so, after getting the injection and didn't know what was going on, and it attacks his platelets when you find the story, which you have to understand was one of the things you saw that it was said to do when it affects cells. It destroys cells. It reprograms cells. It re goes after your, your immune system. And this thing is targeting. When you read this story, remember what I've been saying or the things you've been researching on your own, hopefully, to see better than what I can tell you in just a couple of hours. But uh, this Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, which is not actually a vaccine even by its own definition. It's a treatment for symptoms. It doesn't bring immunity whatsoever. And there's more stories that came out today that I don't even have that say that. It's going to be a reoccurring thing that they have to give to you. So all they did is they created a bunch of patients now that, that are now, ha are they're going to scare into having to, but it, this thing is not normal. These things are not a normal condition. The perfectly healthy doctor dies. They say, oh, well, there must have been something hidden. They don't see it in the trials. Well, that's right. That's what I told you. They're not going to test for all this stuff, and they're going to do it under emergency because if they did test for it, they likely would find out that it did affect platelets. Another story, immunizations with SARS coronavirus leads to pulmonary immunopathology on this challenge with the SARS virus. I'm not going to argue that they can't find the SARS virus. They're showing that vaccines cause pulmonary immu immunopathology. This is so this is the uh, symptoms, isn't it? It causes this, as we, as they said themselves, that these uh, these evidences are there to tell us. And I want to, I drug this from June of night of of 2019. I get, it's one of those tabs that kept going back, and I I happened to spy it. I want to bring it up. Harvard breakthrough show. This is before it happens. Well, we I told you this is when they were studying this was what they were going to do. Harvard breakthrough shows stem cells can be genetically edited in the body, and this story. As time is breaking down here for me, explains to you the, how the problems are in trying to get stem cells programmed. You pull them out of the system, it's really bad, it's harmful, they'll, they'll cause trouble. But they were working back in June, they found a way to do it in your body. And if this doesn't scream to you what it does to cells and how they're editing your genetic machinery in this story using adeno-associated viruses then, chip jab, folks. Adeno-associated viruses, we don't know what the synthetics are looking like, that they allow the construction, reconstruction of cells, to, stem cells to beat other styles of cells, is something that I have, I had to bring up. I've drug it way back from June of 2019. I haven't been able to get to it. And I think I'll throw in some more, some of these links, you'll get them at the blogcaster that I can't get to Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. might be the last island that we can broadcast out of as they start to destroy the uh, the monarchy, starts to destroy the republic, and those of us that want to keep it or try to and help others. And uh, to all you all that are simulcasting and or will mirror this, thank you very much. Be careful. This is not going to last long, and I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>